Hello fellow hungry carnivores. Today I thought I'd share a recipe that's quick and easy, crock pot shanks. This recipe takes minimal prep. You put it in a crock pot and at the end of the day, you get to enjoy a really warm and delicious meal. So what is a shank? Well, a shank is the upper portion of an animal's leg. A cow, a sheep, a deer, a pig, they all have legs and everywhere they move, that muscle is working. So it can be tough when it comes time to cook a shank, but there's a way to make it really tender and delicious. For beef shanks, you'll often see them butchered into steak-like cuts, but don't let that steak appearance fool you. It's gonna be really tough and hard to eat if you cook it like a steak. This cut needs to be cooked low and slow for many hours. And if you do, that little portion of marrow in that bone is gonna lend even more flavor to the dish. Now for the purpose of this video, I used venison shanks. These are whole venison shanks, not cut crossways like the previous image. But you can use beef, you can use lamb, you can use pork, any of those will do. But venison shanks are very manageable to put into a crock pot. So that's what I had and went with here. I would say for regular sized lamb shanks, they would fit in the crock pot easily too. You can always cook these in the oven if you don't have a crock pot or if they're too big. You'd have to have an awfully big crock pot for a whole beef shank. Plus it would take forever to cook it. I'm pretty sure that's why they cut them into cross cuts and give it a fancy name. So step one for my venison shanks was to get them lubed up real good with some delicious duck fat. But that's just because I happen to have some. You can use olive oil, you can use bacon fat, you can use beef tallow that's been melted. It's really up to you, but I would stay away from any kind of seed oil or vegetable oil. The next step was to give both sides of the shanks a real good dose of salt and pepper. And of course that fat helped the salt and pepper to adhere to it. And before we put them in that crock pot, we're gonna give them a good browning on the grill. This step isn't mandatory, but I think it makes a difference in the flavor profile. If you don't want to do it on the grill, you can do it on your stovetop in a pan, or you can skip this step altogether. It doesn't take long. After about three or four minutes on one side, give it a flip and do about three or four minutes on the other side. You're really just looking for the beginning of that browning stage. Once you've got them browned to the way you like them, it's time to take them off and head for the crock pot. Once you've got them in the crock pot, it's up to you what kind of liquid you want to use. I would recommend some beef bone broth or some beef stock. That will work really nicely. In my situation, I happen to have a quart of what I consider to be liquid gold. This is my homemade bone broth. And it works really well with things in the crock pot. If you have access to homemade bone broth, take advantage of it. But make sure that you have the right can opener because if you're like me, you'll futz around with this one and that one and, well, eventually you'll finally get it open. Ugh, I knew I should have gone to culinary school. Anyway, whatever liquid you choose, go ahead and pour about a quart of it in there. You may need more, you may need less. It doesn't need to cover the meat. One third to two thirds of the way up the sides will be fine, as long as it doesn't run dry over the next eight hours. 
Now turn your crock pot on the low and just let it do its thing for the next seven to nine hours. Oh, almost forgot. If you're feeling extra fancy, put in a sprig of rosemary. It adds a real nice aroma. And depending on your crock pot, seven, eight, nine hours later, it's time to take that meat back out and the bone should just fall right off of the meat. Once you've removed all the bones, Next, it's time to shred all that meat up because we're going to put it back in that crock pot into those juices for about another hour. Make sure you're looking lively when the boss comes around to inspect your project. Now, back into the crock pot it goes. Now, after that hour, it's time to plate, and there's all kinds of ways you can eat this. If you're not on a carnivore diet, you could serve this over potatoes or rice. You could put sour cream on top, you could put salsa on top, jalapenos on top, or you can just enjoy the delicious meat that you've just made just like it is in these glorious juices. But if I may be so bold as to recommend my favorite way to top this, especially to my carnivore friends, it would be with a beautiful soft boiled egg. There's just something about that warm, soft, runny yolk that pairs so well with slow cooked meat. And uh, nobody says you have to have just one. So there you have it, an easy slow cooker shank recipe. I hope this inspires you to give it a try, or at least some version of it. It's delicious, it's nutritious, and I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video.